Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Cheryl Pemberton Graves, the Chief Volunteer Officer here at Lighthouse Hill. Thank you so much for coming out today to our voter accessibility workshop. So our mission, as you know, is to provide exceptional services that inspire people who are visually impaired to attain their goals. So we welcome you to this workshop and demonstration. So we believe here at Lighthouse Guild that a person has a right to vote independently, and this is a fundamental cornerstone of our democracy. And accessibility should be something that is in place for every voter. So our partnership with the New York City Board of Elections grew out of a passion of one of our Lighthouse Guild volunteers who also works with the Board of Elections. Um, she's sitting right in the back, Dorothy. Um, so through her, we found out that people with vision impairment have challenges when they're at the polls. They were not necessarily aware of the resources, and when they went to the polls, maybe they did not, um, were not readily told that some of the resources were there. So our goal with this workshop is to educate everyone that has come and to raise awareness about the options for voting. So I do have a question. How many people, before hearing about this workshop, knew about the BMD and other resources to help you vote at the polls? Okay, so two people. So that's what we want to, we want more hands to go up. We want all the hands to go up next time. So the session leader for this event is Ariel Merkel. She is the ADA coordinator of the Americans with Disabilities Act for the Board of Elections for the City of New York. And I will turn the floor over to Ariel now. Thank you. Thanks everyone for coming today. Uh, we're very excited to have this partnership with the Lighthouse Guild and thank you for hosting this important event. Um, again, my name is Ariel Merkel. I'm um, one of the ADA coordinators at the Board of Elections in the City of New York. I oversee the ADA unit there. Um, so first, I'm going to start with just a general overview of what it is to vote in New York City. Um, what are the options that we have? And then we'll kind of explain how those various options are made accessible to voters with disabilities. So election day is always on a Tuesday. The polls are open from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And throughout the five boroughs of the city, we have over 1,200 poll sites that are open on election day. In addition to election day, we have early voting, which is nine days prior to election day where early voting sites are open. And we have well over 100 of these citywide. Um, and they are opened for nine days, so two weekends in the week between prior to election day. So that's a second option that you have uh, to cast your ballot. And for those voters who can't make it to a full site, um, and need to vote from home, we have what's called an absentee ballot, which is a ballot that is sent to your home that you um, mark in the privacy in your own home. So the ADA unit ensures that all of these um, ways of voting are, are able to be done privately and independently for voters with disabilities. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so just a general overview of uh, my unit, the ADA unit, that's Americans with Disability Act unit. Um, we do a lot of poll site accessibility. So that's making sure that the actual poll site is accessible to voters with disabilities. Is the door frame wide enough? Is the elevator functional? Is the braille in the elevator? Is the slope of the ramp uh, compliant? The height of the handrails? All of those components that make a physical location accessible to people with disabilities needs to be done for every single one of our 1,200 and 100 plus early voting poll sites. Um, so we come up with uh, temporary resolutions to, the, to these barriers. And if there is no resolution to the barrier, if the door frame is simply too narrow and we can't widen it, we have to um, use an alternate uh, poll site. We also provide poll worker accommodations. We have many poll workers with disabilities, and I encourage you to apply to be, we have poll worker applications here, as well as voter registration forms. Um, we provide ASL interpretation for our deaf poll workers. We have several blind and visually impaired uh, poll workers, poll workers with various mobility issues. So um, we also provide reasonable accommodation for our poll workers. 
And then the actual act of voting, the voting process. We ensure that that process is accessible through, um, if you are marking your ballot in a poll site, these ballot marking devices that will have an opportunity for you to touch and feel and experience. Um, the ballot marking device is uh, a very critical machine that is used for voters with disabilities and voters who without disabilities have the, the right to use them as well. Um, and it provides an independent and private um, avenue for voters to mark their ballot. And for voters who mark, who are unable to go to the polls and need an absentee ballot, but are unable to mark with a paper and a pen an absentee ballot mailed to them, we have an accessible version of the absentee ballot. And we'll also do a demonstration of that um, today for you as well. So to begin, poll site accessibility. Like I mentioned, our election day poll sites are well over 1,200, um, and we have um, approaching 200 early voting sites. Um, and in order to make sure that these are accessible for voters with disabilities under Title II of the Americans with Disability Act, that's for local governments, which uh, the Board of Election is, we need to make sure our program is accessible. That's our program is voting. So uh, a building might be inaccessible on the top floor. If we're on the bottom, it doesn't matter. As long as you can get from the curb cut to the poll room, that's the only path of travel that we are concerned with, that there is one accessible path from the curb cut into the to the poll room. But we don't own these. The vast, vast majority of these buildings are not owned by us. They are schools, they are libraries, they are museums, they are community centers. They are all kinds of different um, locations that we can't physically change the slope of the ramp or widen the door. So we have to come up with temporary solutions to temporarily, for election day, make, make sure that um, these locations are ADA compliant. And if, in order to do that, we should deploy ramp equipment to over 600. That's about half of the pool sites have some kind of temporary mat or ramp equipment outside to address cracks in the concrete or um, slope that is a little too steep or what have you. So we, we deploy a lot of equipment, including several temporary vertical platform lifts at a few pool sites. And the images on this slide uh, are, the top is a temporary ramp that we deploy at a pool site, and there's an image of a vertical platform lift also at a, a pool site. So we resolve these barriers with temporary solutions. There's uh, three main images on this slide, and the first is of a pool site with a, a, a pathway in which there's um, a cage of a, an ele a air conditioner protruding into the path of travel. And it is protruding well past four inches and, and is marked with sharp metal corners. So if someone is using a cane to find the circulation path, they would run into this air conditioner either at height level or chest level. This is a very dangerous, um, uh, uh, barrier that might for a sighted person might not be a, a big issue but this is quite hazardous so there's a couple different resolutions that we could deploy here we could simply put a cone underneath so uh, the cane would detect the cone in order for the person to go around for this specific example the path looks a little too narrow to do to place a cone so we would designate a, a different path of travel travel a different doorway a different uh, ramp in order to make sure that that the voter has a safe way to access the poll site. The middle picture is a picture of a pathway with some very deep cracks, and for a, a visual learner, that is a very obvious of these three pictures. You see big cracks, and the purpose of this is to show that these other images are just as hazardous. Um, and so these cracks are a little too big and deep just to place a, a separate mat over. Um, we might put a piece of metal um, covered with a, a mat, but it looks a little too severe for that. We'd probably just change the path of travel to, to direct voters to a different entrance. And then the third photo is just a simple walkway leading up to a pool site that looks like just a, a simple walkway. But um, included in the photo is a measurement of a slope reader that reads 12.6%. And this is a slope that is much too high. This is a dangerous condition for a wheelchair user using a manual wheelchair who might be frail and lightweight could perhaps flip over backwards and hit their head. So something, again, that doesn't look like a barrier, 
to someone who is not paying attention to these specific issues, um, again, our solution here would do be to deploy a temporary ramp to, to extend that ramp out to reduce the, the slope um, to make it compliant. So those are just some examples of the temporary solutions. On this slide, I have an image of what we call a rubber threshold ramp, which is a, a thick rubber mat that is butted up against a lip at a door, and that just smooths the transition um, for a wheelchair user or, or someone with crutches or even a stroller or push cart can um, access that, that threshold easier. And we have another image of a ramp uh, that is installed at the step, the front step of a pool site. Doorbell, we have temporary doorbells and a lot of our uh, doors are too heavy or difficult to open or require twisting of the wrist, which is not ADA compliant. Um, so we install these doorbells that you can ring and a poll worker will be available to open the door. They have the other device in the poll site um, and will open the door when, they, when it buzzes. And the last image on the slide is cones. We use cones for everything. <laughs> Put a cone under a protruding object, a cone to warn people not to go to a certain area. So uh, very much uh, friends of the cones. So that is um, entering the pole site. Actually entering the building in order to vote is the first step. Um, and we have the international symbol of accessibility, which is a blue sign with a white image, a white icon of a wheelchair user. In, the, in New York City, we use the dynamic version of the ISA, which is a, a wheelchair user in action, um, pushing themselves, not uh, being static. And uh, every pool site will have this to mark that this is the accessible door, this is the, enter, the, the entrance that is um, ADA approved. And to find that door, we deploy these uh, wayfinding or directional signages that show go straight, go down, of uh, the corridor go up left in order to make sure that voters can find the, the right entrance. So that's, a, that's the pole site, that's the physical structure of the actual building, the room. Um, and then when you enter the room, we have to make sure that it's set up in a way that is ADA compliant. That the ballot marking device isn't shoved in the corner without an uh, appropriate radius for someone with a wheelchair to um, go around it as well as making sure that there is at least one ballot marking device in every poll site. Some have uh, more than one. And then making sure that the absentee ballot process is also accessible. So again, we will have a demo of both the BMD and the ADA absentee ballot um, shortly. But for those of you who are unfamiliar with the voting process in New York City, the first step is to enter the poll site and you go to an information table. If it's an early voting site, they'll print off your ballot for you. If it's an election day poll site, they will have it pre-printed and hand you the ballot. Everyone votes on a paper ballot in the poll site. You will take that paper ballot and you will either go into a privacy booth and mark the ovals with a pen to determine who or what you are voting for. And um, there is a privacy booth that is lower and wider for um, people with various ADA needs. Um, but if you're unable or uninterested in marking the paper ballot with a pen, you would insert your paper ballot into this machine, the ballot marking device, the BMD, and that will mark your ballot. That's all it does is it marks the ovals in, and it types out the, the write-ins if you write um, a specific name in, and it will give you the ballot with the ovals marked in. You have not voted yet. You still have to take that ballot and put it into the scanner. The scanner is what counts your ballot, it's how you're actually casting the ballot. So it's a three parts uh, process. And th the image on this screen is um, an aerial view of a poll site showing the path of travel. So again, we have to make sure that every path, pathway is three feet wide when a, a voter is going straight, and every turn is a five, foot, five by five turning radius. So people with large scooters or large wheelchairs have enough clearance to make that turn. So that's the general uh, voting process in the city. And now I really want to dive into the ballot marking device. These are really wonderful machines that um, enable many voters to vote privately and independently. <clears throat> and uh, every poll site has at least one of these. Some 
early voting sites have multiple, and many election day poll sites have more than one as well. Um, the BMD that you see here today that you will be um, using and demoing if you so choose is the auto mark made by ESNS. And there's many different features. I'll go in one by one, but just a general overview <clears throat> that the ballot marking device has a touch screen in which you can use um, either just your finger or there's a stylus um, in, in every BMD card. And also when you sign the pull pad, you are given a, a pen that also has a stylus. So you can use that on the BMD as well. Um, the keypad, it has braille on it, so we can go through that shortly. And there's an audio assistant. So the whole ballot is read to you that you can pl plug in on your own headphones or we supply headphones with disposable covers um, and listen to the ballot by navigating either on the touch screen or with the braille. Um, there's also an option for high contrast. So if you don't want the colors, you want just white on the black screen or black on the white screen, that is an option as well. It zooms in for uh, people with visual impairments to make the text quite large. Um, the sip and puff will go over, and as well as the rocker paddle are two really important um, adaptive accessories. But first I just wanna stress that it's about marking device. It only marks ballot does not print the ballot. You have to insert the paper ballot into the machine and it does not scan your ballot. You have not voted just by putting your ballot in this machine and marking it. You have to cast it in the scanner. That's the machine that actually is, is counting, your, counting your ballot. So think of it as just a very expensive pen. <laughs> it's just simply a, a pen that mark, marks your ballot. So the first feature I wanna discuss is the touch screen. Um, so when you approach the BMD, you'll see that it's a bit smaller, it's larger than a, a tablet, but smaller than a computer screen. Um, and you can either use, use your finger or the stylus if you prefer to actually touch the screen. And as well as the braille. The braille pad is located on the lower right hand of the machine. Um, there's up and down, which is how you scroll up and down in, in a list of names back and forward, that's how you go to the next race, or if you wanna go back to the previous race of, you know, say mayor, governor, etc. cetera. Um, there's a diamond shape, which blackens the screen, so if you don't want any uh, vision, uh, people who, who can see looking at your ballot, you can make the screen go completely black, so you're just listening to it. Um, repeat is obvious, it just repeats what you just heard, and that you can adjust the tempo, goes quicker or slower, as well as the volume, um, louder and, and quieter. And um, many people use it to listen to the ballot. Uh, so again, we have, uh, uh, my goodness, what are these called? <laughs> headphones. <laughs> headphones that we provide with disposable covers, but you are you're welcome to bring your own. It's just a standard jack. Um, and uh, again, you can adjust the, the volume as, as needed. And I should mention that it's also in the various languages of the ballot. So depending on where you live, your ballot might be in different languages, always in English, sometimes in Spanish, sometimes in Korean, Bengali, um, and the BMD will have an audio file of all of those languages. If your ballot is not in those languages, the BMD is not gonna have the audio of that, of that language. So um, if you are a, a blind um, voter who prefers to listen to the ballot in Korean, that is an option if you live in an area where the the ballot is available in that language. So next I wanted to discuss one of my favorite features is the rocker panel. This is a device that's slightly larger than a, a large cell phone and there's two main buttons to it. On the left is a no button which is also the scroll button and that is in braille. This is how you go up and down on the ballot. You scroll up and down saying nope not that one, no not that one. You continue to scroll. On the right hand side is the yes button, which is also select. So this is how you select your choices. And this is a simple, very simple device, just two buttons. Um, you can use, put it in your lap and use your fingers. Um, you can use any appendages that are necessary. You can put it on the floor and use your feet if um, you're unable to use your arms. It's a very adaptable piece of um, an accessory um, that is 
very popular with people with certain disabilities. And the next is called the sip and puff device. And this is a device that goes over around the, the voter's head and into their mouth. We have sterile sip and puff uh, available in every PMD. However, most sip and puff users prefer to use their own for obvious reasons, especially in the current age that we live in. Um, but we do have sterile uh, sip and puffs in every single ballot marking device part. And the way that this works is very similar to the rock and paddle. There's two main um, options, sipping, which is breathing in uh, breaths, and puffing, which is breathing out. So by breathing in, you're going to the next candidate, and by breathing out, you're selecting. So that same yes and no is, is done just by the breath that you do. So this is a very important piece of adaptive uh, equipment so voters can vote privately and independently who might not otherwise be able to. And again, voters can use their, bring their own, it's a standard jack, or um, we always have sterile um, pieces with us. So I'm happy to, to share this information. Uh, there's more information about the ballot marking device on our, our webpage, vote.nyc, vote.nyc. And we all have a video that is actually targeted for poll workers to explain the features of the BMD and actually shows images of voters with disabilities using the BMD. So I already mentioned this previously, but for those of you who prefer to mark the ballot, on, with a pen, you can always use the privacy booth, and um, there's an ADA privacy booth in every poll site. And in the privacy booth is a magnifying machine that is going to be located in the sleeve of the back panel of the actual uh, privacy booth. So when you enter the privacy booth, you can feel to the to the back of it, pull out this magnifying sheet, and that can assist you as well. And every uh, Privacy booth has a magnifying sheet. <clears throat> so, just a general tip and reminders of your your rights um, as voters. You have an option to have a bipartisan team of poll workers to assist you. So, if you're a little uncomfortable and you want uh, some assistance, either at, in the privacy booth or at the BMD, a bipartisan team will uh, be there to assist you. Every BMD has a BMD inspector who is a, a a poll worker who is specifically assigned to that machine. So there should be someone there to assist you. And besides those poll workers, you always have the right to have someone that you trust come and help you in the polls. There's a couple caveats there. That person can't be your employer. It can't be your union representative. A poll watcher, those are people that the candidates hire to, to observe the polls. Or a candidate who's on the ballot. So if you, if your best friend, your mother, your son wants to come and help you, perfectly acceptable. They'll just have to sign an oath that they're not your employer, et cetera. Um, and once they sign that oath, they're, they're able to, to assist you. And another just tip that if you happen to make a mistake, and one thing that I should say is the BMD is really helpful for people who um, might be uh, worried about marking the wrong, wrong name. Uh, it just gives a little peace of mind, especially if, if you're not confident that you're going to be able to ma make it completely in the circle. This makes sure that the oval is completely marked appropriately. Um, but if you do make a mistake with your pen and paper ballot, you can always return it to the poll worker, ask for a new one. They will void that one before they give you a new one. And you're, you have the right up to three ballots uh, of this style. Um, that said, if the ballot marking device jams or rips your ballot, which occasionally unfortunately happens, that does not count to those three ballots. You still have a right to um, an additional ballot. So those are some just general tips when you're voting in the poll sites. Now, voting from home, <coughs> absentee ballots. So voters who are unable to go to their poll site can apply for an absentee ballot, which is sent to their home. The standard absentee ballot is a piece of paper, a paper ballot, an envelope that is mailed to you. You mark with a pen and return in the envelopes provided. This is not an accessible process, obviously, so we provide an accessible version of the absentee ballot that we are gonna have a demonstration of shortly. 
So um, this is something that voters would use an electronic version of their ballot, use their home adaptive technology, voice over JAWS, what have you, whatever you use to navigate your own technology to listen and mark the ballot, then print the ballot in your home and then return it with envelopes that we provide to you. I also wanna clarify that there is a temporary absentee and permanent absentee. So if you are unable to go to the polls on one specific election, you can apply for as a temporary absentee. This is what is most common. However, if you know that you are permanently disabled and you will never be able to go to the poll site, and this is a permanent condition and you don't wanna apply every election, you can apply as a permanent absentee voter. And in this case, the, the paper ballot will be sent to you for every election that you're eligible. So you don't have to continuously uh, reapply. So how do we make this accessible to voters with disabilities? We have an ADA version called the Accessible Absentee Ballot, which is an electronic version of the absentee ballot. And if an eligible voter applies for the Accessible Absentee Ballot, you'll receive an email from us that has a link to a portal that you, uh, a cyber secure portal that you access your ballot through. And again, the voter uses their home adaptive technology, whatever software um, that they're comfortable with or the built-in voice over um, that comes with many different devices to navigate the ballot and select your choices. And because election law requires us to receive a paper ballot from you, you can't email it back to us. You can't email it back marked with someone's name on it. You have to print it off and return it to the Board of Elections. Um, so there's a couple different ways that you can do that. We, as soon as you apply for an accessible absentee ballot, my team mails you um, a set of envelopes for you to put your ballot in. If you are um, more comfortable with a second option, you also have an opportunity to download your own envelopes and fold, fold it to um, into an envelope. The thing is you have to remember to put a stamp on it <laughs> because we can't send you a stamp <laughs> over email. But the, the envelopes that we do mail to you have a stamping, a prepaid stampage. Um, and we have put a braille letter X on it so you know where to sign. You can sign anywhere on the envelope, but you have to sign the envelope. That is the, the way that we process uh, your, your ballot appropriately. So how do you apply for an accessible absentee ballot? <clears throat> There's a couple different ways. You can apply online on our online application portal. If you go to vote.nyc-absentee slash voting, um, there are a couple, two options. The online absentee ballot application is just the standard paper ballot. And there's an icon of a piece of paper with a pen and that's the paper ballot. Um, the online accessible ADA ballot has a, the ISA, the, the image, the international symbol of accessibility. So you would click on the ADA ballot and you'd get to the application portal where you'd put your first name, your last name, your date of birth, your borough, and your zip code as it appears on your voter registration form. So if you recently got married and or got married a while ago and didn't change your name with us, uh, you have to make sure that you use um, the name that you register to vote with. If you have a hyphenated name, however it has, however you register to vote, that's what you have to uh, insert here in order for us to pull up your voter file and process your application. That's the online portal to apply. You can also apply with a, a actual piece of paper that you mail to us. Um, and there is an ADA version of that, which is a fillable PDF not the most accessible, but um, it is, uh, fillable PDFs are not as accessible as the online portal, but it is an option um, if you prefer that. And of course, this application comes in uh, the various languages that we support, Spanish, Chinese, Korean, and Bengali. Um, on the screen now is the fillable PDF of how to apply for an ADA ballot. Um, and again, you can also always apply for the portal, it's a little bit more simple. And then how do you receive it? We'll send you an email. It's gonna come from accessible ballot at boenyc.gov. And it will state that you've been approved for your ballot. Please click here. You'll click on the URL. 
and that will bring you to the portal that we are about to have a demonstration of with JAWS. You can actually hear what it sounds like. But first you would um, certify that you are eligible for the ballot. Um, enter again your first and last name and your date of birth as it appears on your voter registration record. You're gonna select your choices, the candidates that you prefer or the propositions that are on the ballot. You're always gonna have a confirmation page. You have this on the BMT, BMD as well that you're confirming that this is uh, accurate before you actually print it. And then you would print your absentee ballot. And again, um, you cannot email it back to us for cybersecurity reasons and various other um, reasons related to the New York State election law. We have to have the paper ballot sent, sent to us. Um, so what do you do with the paper ballot now? You need to send it back to us some, in a specific envelope. And we will mail you that envelope. There's two sets of envelope. The oath envelope is what you put the ballot in. And that's the one that has the Braille X that you would sign, seal it. Um, and then you put that in just a general uh, return envelope that has the postage and the Board of Elections address uh, printed on it. Um, it's really important that you sign and seal it. If you don't, you'll get a what they call a cure letter. We'll send you back saying you forgot to sign this or this, this was, uh, there's some other issue with the envelope. And then the Board of Elections will, will, once they determine that that envelope is valid, they will separate the ballot from the envelope and process it separately to maintain privacy in the absentee process. So just remember to sign the oath envelope. And then you, you can either drop it off in the mailbox because it'll have postage paid on it, or you could drop, up, drop it off at any poll site, election day or early voting at any of poll site in the five boroughs. Um, there's an absentee ballot box at every poll site. If there's a line, you don't have to wait in line. You can just go in and drop your, just tell them I'm just dropping off my absentee, drop it off and, and be done with your day. Or you could always, if you wanna come and visit us, uh, <laughs> deliver it, hand deliver it at our offices. Um, there's a, BOE off borough office in each of the five boroughs. And then again, I mentioned that there's a, an opportunity to download the printed envelopes. We mail the envelopes to the address on file. So if you are currently staying at your mom's in Queens, but you're a registered voter in the Bronx, um, and you know, you're gonna have a trouble going back to get your envelopes, you can print off your own envelopes. But again, you have to remember to put a stamp on Okay, so uh, lastly, you're able to track it. So you, we have this uh, tracker, nycabsentee.com slash tracking, and you can see, oh, the, the post office has it. Oh, it was delivered to the Board of Elections. So you can have that peace of mind tracking your absentee ballot through the process. It's been a, a really popular feature. And before we go into the demos, I just wanna go over some really important dates. We have an election coming up very soon. <laughs> Um, Tuesday, November 7th is uh, the general election here in New York City. Polls are open from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, on the ballot will be city council. Every single city council um, office is up because of redistricting. They read through all the lines of the city council. This happens every 10 years after the census. All the lines are redrawn based on the new census data. And um, so you may or may not have uh, a race, you know, someone may not be running against your city council, but uh, all of those um, offices are up for reelection. And there's also a district attorney in Bronx, Queens, <coughs> Staten Island, and various uh, civil court judges and other um, judicial races on your ballot as well. Early voting starts on Saturday, October 28th and runs to Sunday, November 5th. That's nine days of early voting, two weekends and the week between. Um, your early voting site is most likely different than your election day site. So make sure that you check to make sure you're going to the right place. And the last day to apply for an absentee ballot for this election is Monday, October 23rd. And then next year is a very big year. It's our Super Bowl year of elections. Um, with the presidential primary, will be April 2nd, um, which is very early for us, and early voting will begin March 23rd and go to Saturday, March 30th. So there's 
normally nine days. This is a unique situation where it's only eight days because the, they are going to have Easter Sunday not be a day of early voting. So um, each early voting day for this will be extended by, I think an hour, don't quote me on that, but um, it's a unique early voting period because of the holiday. And then we'll have another primary on June 25th with early voting from June 15th to the 23rd. And then of course the, the big uh, presidential general election will be November 5th of next year. And early voting will be October 26th until November 3rd. So I have on this slide various resources that I'm happy to circulate around uh, our to check that you're registered to vote, to check where your poll site is, um, to check where your absentee ballot is, and uh, my unit's general uh, information. So I think now at this stage, we're going to switch gears into having a demonstration of the acceptable <coughs> absentee ballot. So we're going to listen to um, the process of, so in this scenario, you've uh, applied for an absentee ballot, You've received the email with the link, and you are clicking on the URL, and yes. you're going to see the, the portal, the Accessible Absentee Ballot Portal. Refreshing page, loading page, blank, loading complete. Page has two regions, two okay. headings. And so before I start, I want to point out to everyone that if you are using JAWS to navigate the absentee ballot, when you move from one page to the next, for whatever reason, the sequencing sometimes bounces you around the page. So when you the page first loads, instead of starting at the top, sometimes you're at the bottom, sometimes you're at the middle. If you are not sure where you are, just hit control home and start at the top. Because sometimes, if, if basically, if it tells you you're actually talking about Privacy Act, you're at the bottom. So I just wanna make sure you know that because a lot of people get confused. So, when you first start, you're going to have to pick your language. Visited link English. So we're going to hit English. Enter blank. Loading page. Loading complete. Okay, let's see where we are. Main region end. So I'm at the end, so I'm going to go to the Welcome top. Welcome voters. Okay, and so one of the things that you're going to hear, if, which is really nice about the way that this website is structured, is that you're going to hear skip to content. You want to do that because it's going to skip you past all the different languages. You don't need to keep hearing about all the different languages every single time then, you know, let's, we can expedite it. So, look, you're not I going to hear to that see. on yours. That is just because we're in demo mode. Link click here to exit QA mode. Link skip to content. So we're gonna skip to content. Enter, main region. Welcome voters heading level one. When you hear heading, you know that you are where you need to be. This site is provided to eligible voters in New York City with disabilities to ensure you have secure and accessible access to your ballot and ballot materials. This site will allow you to mark, review, print, and return your ballot to your local elections office. Please review the statements below and certify that they are true before proceeding to the accessible version of your ballot. List of two items. Bullet, I declare that I am visually impaired or otherwise disabled, and that such disability prevents me from being able to independently cast a paper absentee ballot without traveling to a board of elections office and using a ballot marking device. Bullet, I understand that my selections marked by this system must be printed by me and submitted to my local board of elections using the official return envelope. I may use either the return envelope that was mailed to me or the foldable envelope template provided by this system that I will print, fold, and mail. Ballots must be postmarked by election day. List N. Note that you are required to print the ballot at the end of this session. Please ensure you have access to a printer. You may use paper of any size. I certify that all of the above return checkbox now checked. Space. space I certify that all of the above return checkbox checked. To clear check mark, I certify go back button, continue button. And I'm going to hit continue. Enter. Voter lookup heading level one. Okay, and so here is where you're going to start putting in your information that she mentioned before. You know, your name, your birth date, and that kind of fun stuff. Please fill in the fields below to find your ballot. First name started, it requires his pop up. Demo. Type so, text. In this case, because we are doing a demonstration, I'm not putting my real name in. I am using the uh, demonstration account that we have set up. For that reason also, the next page will be 
completely unique to me, and it'll be something you guys complete, can, can, can completely ignore. Last name, stop, month, co day, combo box, year, combo box, continue button to enter. And now we're going to patiently wait for it to search for my ballot. <laughs> Voter lookup document. Okay. So, yeah. QA mode is enabled. Link click here to exit QA mode. Link skip to content. Enter. So New region. She's select having an option to select line. an election, and that's because we have a real election happening right now. At the same time, we're doing a demonstration. When you're experiencing this in real, you'll never have to select your election. Maybe you'll just go straight to the ballot. Okay. Please select an election for select button. Enter. Voter lookup document. Main, main region end, link privacy policy. Okay, see, and it jumped me down to the bottom, so I'm gonna go back up to the top. Ballot we're gonna tell the vendor about that and tweak it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of course. QA mode is enabled. Link click here to exit QA link skip to content. Enter. Okay. Your ballot is presented below. To mark your selection, click on the check box. To remove a selection, click on the check box again. So as you navigate through this, it's going to give you step-by-step -step instructions of what to do. So if you're not sure, just arrow back up and listen to what the instruction has told you to do. We're, the first thing we're gonna come in, in contact with is some basic information about the general area and stuff that you are voting in. So we're just gonna breeze past that a little bit quickly. To vote for a candidate whose name is not a candidate's name in the space. If you have any questions, please approved. Heading level two official ballot. Heading level two election colon demo election. Heading level two election district colon 909. Heading level two assembly district colon 99. One of five. Click an option to make a selection. To change your selection, click your link skip to bottom. Heading level three favorite ice cream. Okay, and so now we have officially hit our ballot question. So our first question is going to be about our favorite ice cream. Vote for not more than one. And it's important to listen to this. Right after it asks you what you're you're voting for, it tells you how many votes you can cast. So you have to, you cannot make more votes than what it allows. You don't have to vote. You can skip it all together. You can only vote for one if it asks for two, but you can't vote for more than the, than the maximum that they've asked for. So if they said one, you only get one vote. Group start favorite ice cream. Three check boxes. So it is telling us how many options we have. Vanilla check box not checked. Chocolate check box not checked. Strawberry check box not checked. So we have the choice of vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. So how many votes do we have for vanilla ice cream as your favorite? One, two, three, four, five. Wow. Um, how many chocolates? Two. And strawberry. One, two, three, four. I think the vanilla has it. Chocolate, vanilla check box now. So check. I'm gonna hit space bar to check it. Space, favorite ice cream group. Vanilla check box checked. To clear check chocolate, to strawberry group and favorite two and five. Link skip to bottom. Heading level three, favorite summer activity. And so now we're gonna vote on our favorite summer activity. Vote for not more than one. We have we get to vote for one option. Group start favorite summer activity. Four check boxes. And we have four options. Hiking check box not checked. Fishing check box not checked. Sport check box not checked. Write-in check box not checked. And now write-in is for you to be able to write in your own selection. So something they have not already pre-written into your options. So the options are hiking, fishing, sports, or write-in. So how many do we have for hiking as your favorite summer activity? Not popular with this group, okay. Fishing, <laughs> any fish, fishermen? No. Uh, any sports? One, two, three. Um, and any write-ins? Anyone would like to make their own options? Cheryl? Cycling. Cycling? And go to beach. Beach. The woman in the front? Okay, yeah, go to the beach. Oh, going to the beach? And yeah. I'm sorry, what are you doing? Okay, and in the back? Yes. Traveling. Was there any repeats? So we had two beaches. We had two beaches, so I think the right end for the beach. Oh, okay. 
passport check. Writing check box not check. Space. Favorite summer activity group. Writing check box check. Write in. Favorite summer activity write in edit check. B E A C H. Group and favorite summer activity. Three of five. Link skip to bottom. Heading level three, favorite winter activity. Okay, now we get our favorite winter. Vote for not more than two. And now we get to have up to two selections. So on a real ballot, this might be something like uh, your judges. Sometimes you're vote for five, vote for seven. Um, delegates to the, to the judicial convention, sometimes vote for 10. Again, you don't have to vote. If it's vote for five, you don't have to vote for five. You can vote for one, for two, that's fine. You can't vote for six. You try to, to overvote, it will invalidate your ballot. And this um, to, this product prevents you from overvoting because that would invalidate your ballot. If you undervote, meaning you only vote for one out of five, that's perfectly fine. But it will give you a warning at the end just to make sure that, that that's your accurate um, representation. Okay. So let's see what our options are. Group star favorite winter activity. <coughs> five check boxes. So we have five options. Skiing checkbox not checked. Snowboarding checkbox not checked. Sledding checkbox not checked. Right in. One of two checkbox right in. Two of two checkbox not checked. So we have skiing, snowboarding, sledding, and two right in options. Any skiers? Anyone choose skiing? No skiers. Anyone choose snowboarding? Nope. What about sledding? We got one, two, three for sledding. Um, and write-ins. Yes, in the back. Skating. In the back, in the purple. Traveling. Anything else? All right, I think that we had three for sledding, so oh, sledding right. is our Ready. option here. Was sledding checkbox not checked? Space. Favorite winter activity group. Sledding checkbox not checked. To check Chris' face bar. Check. Oh, okay, check. There it goes. Right in. Right in. Two of two group and favor four of five. Link skip to bottom. Heading level three, favorite Nick attraction. Okay, so let's see what our favorite Nick attractions are. Nick is Vote for not seat. more than one. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of us who have used a screen reader ever are used to NYC being called Nick. Group star favorite Nick attraction. Five check boxes. So we have five options. Central Park check box not checked. The Metropolitan Museum of Art check box not checked. Statue of Liberty checkbox not checked. Times Square checkbox not checked. Write-in checkbox not checked. Okay, so our favorite New York City attraction. We have Central Park, the Met, the Statue of Liberty, Times Square, or a write-in. How many for Central Park? One, two, three, four. How many for the Metropolitan Museum of Art? Two, three. And how many for the Statue of Liberty? One. How many for Times Square? One times square. Any write-ins? Yes. Okay. I think that Central Park. One again. Got it. Times Square Statue no, of the Metropolitan Central, right? Central Park checkbox like not checked. Space. Favorite Nick attraction group. Central Park checkbox checked. To the Metropolitan Statue of Times Square check write-in check group and favorite five of five. Link skip to bottom. Heading level three article one. Vote yes or no. Okay. So now we're down here where we're gonna vote on cause and we're going to decide yes or no do we want to vote for it or do we not shall the queen's school district require all schools to only assign homework on weeknights and prohibit the assignment of work on friday that must be completed and turned in on the following monday so are we voting for kids in queens to have no homework on weekends yes or no how many yes one two how many no one two, wow one two three four Five. Lots of people want the kids doing homework on the weekend. Group start article one. Two check boxes. Yes check box. Now no check box. Now check space. Article one group. No check box. Now checked. To check press space bar. Checked. Group end article one. Go back button. Continue button. Okay, so now I'm gonna continue. Enter ballot marking document. Main region. Selection review heading level one. Your ballot choices are shown below. To change any selection, click the change button next to your selection. So this page is going to let us review our answers. Heading level two official ballot. Heading level two election colon demo election. Heading level two election district colon 999. Heading level two assembly district colon 99. Heading level 
three favorite ice cream. Vanilla. Change favorite ice cream button. So if we had marked this incorrectly by some accident or whatever, we could click this link here and it'll take us back to our ballot so that we can adjust our answer. But we're not going to do that because it's correct. Link skip to bottom. Now, if I would have said, okay, that was the only one I was curious about, I could hit this link right here and jump me straight down to the continue button. But I recommend that you actually look at your answers and make sure that you are confident that you are putting forward the answers you wanted. Heading level three, favorite summer activity. Writing colon beach. Change favorite summer and link skip to bottom. Heading level three, favorite winter activity, sledding. Warning, missing one or two selections. Now, this is saying warning because we had the choice of picking two and we only picked one. That doesn't mean you did something wrong. It just means there's an option there if you wanted to go back and vote for something else as well. And the ballot marking device will also give you that warning too. It's not saying that it's unacceptable. It's just reminding you, you have, you have the opportunity to vote more than you chose to. Change favorite winter activity button. Link skip to bottom. Heading level three, favorite new contraction, Central Park. Change favorite new contraction, link skip to bottom. Heading level three, article one, no. Change article one button, link skip to bottom, go back button. Everything is good. Continue button. We're gonna hit continue. Enter, print your selections document. And now you pretty much hit the end. Now you're going to follow the instructions on the screen. It's gonna tell you about how the process for saving or printing your ballots so that you can do all your next steps of getting it turned in so your ballot is actually counted. Thank you so much. So yeah, um, that is the accessible absentee ballot process. And again, just stressing that you are responsible for printing it. However, if you are unable to be connected to the printer at the time that you're marking your ballot, you can save it as a PDF. You can email it to yourself, not to me, but <laughs> save it to your uh, desktop or whatever until you have access to a printer. Uh, you don't have to print it as soon as you get to this page, but this is uh, how you get access to your um, printed ballot. And another thing that I forgot to mention, we had that prop in there, that proposition about you all wanted the kids to do weekend homework. Um, we do have two propositions on the ballot this year too in November. Um, and both of them are amendments to the New York State Constitution. So in addition to the things that I listed earlier, there's gonna be two um, constitutional amendments on your ballot as well. Um, so I think that that's pretty much it for an accessible absentee ballot. Um, we're gonna take the opportunity for you all to come up to the ballot marking devices. We have one up in the front of the room by me and then another one in the back of the room that you can use our um, fake ballots to test the machine, use the, the various features, so you're familiar with these machines when you go to the polls in November or October. Well, thank you so much for your time.